Well, thank you once again for watching uh, Digital Sojourner as we work our way through 1 Corinthians, which is a, a very interesting book to tackle and to look at. And last week we looked at the first three verses and we were interested to see how God calls uh, the Apostle Paul and how God calls Christians and he names them as saints. Today we're going to continue and we're going to read verses 4 to 9. We won't necessarily get through all of them, but we will think about some of the major points in this section. Let me read it with you. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of God was confirmed in you. So that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. These are lovely words. I'd like to talk to you about them for a little while today. You know, Paul says that he thanks God for those Christians and he thanks God consistently. We're going to be very practical uh, in some of these sections because uh, some later ones will be quite detailed in doctrine. But I wonder how often I get excited and I thank God for my fellow Christians. Paul thanks God for those Christians and he says, I thank my God always on your behalf. I'm talking to God about you. And that is a very important thing, to talk to God about fellow believers. Sometimes we talk to fellow believers about other believers, and it's not always good. And sometimes it can be destructive and divisive. And he's going to deal with that type of division in a later set of verses in this chapter. But Paul says to these Christians, I thank God and I talk to God about you. And he says, I'll tell you why. He says, I'll give you a couple of reasons why I talk to God about you. He says, for the grace of God, which is given you or which was given you in Christ Jesus. He says, I thank God and I thank God for the grace that was given to you through the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God for the day that he touched you and he saved you and he washed you. And the grace of God came into your life and you knew the kindness of God and the goodness of God in your experience. He's excited to think about what God has done. He says, I thank my God for the grace of God which was given you through Jesus Christ. It's the only way we come into the blessing of salvation through the grace of God and he thanks God for it. And then he says, I want to thank God as well that you are enriched in every dimension and area of your life, that in everything you are enriched by him. Now Peter talks about a similar thing when he writes in Second Peter chapter 1. He says that God has given to us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. That God has equipped us, that God has provided us with everything, that we might know the riches of his grace, that we might enjoy the blessing of God. So he says that you are enriched by him. The Lord Jesus is the source of that enrichment, the source of the wealth in the Christian's life, the source of the blessings that God has brought him into. So he says, I thank God for that. And he says, there are two areas that I want to remind you about. He says, you've been enriched in how you speak for God, the words, the teaching. And he says, you've been enriched in the knowledge that you have of God. Now, Peter speaks about that as well. He says that he's given us to all things that pertain to life and godliness. He says that we, we grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has given us all things so we can be increased in our experience and our knowledge of God in daily life and living. That's a wonderful thing. So he says the Christians have been enriched in what they say and what they know, the knowledge of God, the experience of God in their life. And he says the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. He says this is what God does and this is what God said would be done and it has been confirmed in your life's experience. So he says it was confirmed. You are living proof of what God does in an individual's life, in their experience. And you know, he's going to remind them that not only do they know about God, and not only do they enjoy the things of God, but they're anticipating something better and something greater. Did you notice that? It says that you, so, you he says, sorry, 
<laughs> you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there are two things here. They are gifted Christians because God gifts them, and you'll learn more about that in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians. The gifts come from God. They're empowered by the Spirit of God. So he says, you are an immensely gifted group of people. That is what God intends the local church to be. That they, they come behind in no gift. They are outstanding in how God has fitted them to serve him. But he says it's not just gift that you live and enjoy the benefit of today. But he says the outcome of that is that you are eagerly awaiting the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're waiting for him to come. You're waiting for his return. So gift is to get us through and to teach us for today and equip us to serve God. And it's to help us anticipate the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a wonderful thing that he says you are Christians who have been blessed with the grace of God. You've been blessed with the ability to speak for God. You've been blessed with the increased knowledge of God. You are gifted beyond measure and you're anticipating the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we will return to this section next week. But I hope that you remember that that isn't just true about those people in Corinth in that day. These things are true about the Christians in our day. God has equipped them. God has given them the ability to express themselves. He's given them knowledge about himself. He's given them gift to serve them. And he wants them to eagerly anticipate the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I trust you'll thrill at these things again this week. Thank you for listening.